Hi everybody. So we're we are tonight we're going to be making this project bag and I thought um, today I would just do a video about um, binding by machine. I've done a couple of videos or we've done a couple of projects that I've shown you the binding by the machine, but I thought I'd just show you the binding. Um, so what I'm going to show you how to make your binding. I have some new people that they may never have done really done binding before. So I thought, well, I'll just show you how to make your binding and then I will show you how to put it on by machine because I like to put my binding on by machine and I've got a couple really cool from you and I got a cool new foot to show you for the binding so I thought I'd just do a quick video so I'm gonna go ahead and get I've got my strips cut for this project bag they were four uh, widths of the fat quarter so they're like 21 inches wide you know and what two and a quarter inches wide I like two and a quarter inch binding because it fits nice and snug and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew these together. So to sew these together, I'm going to sew them at a diagonal so that they all are in one piece. And this is, you can see the selvage on the end here. I usually just leave the selvages on because then I can just put the fabric pieces kind of like crisscross them a little bit. And then I can tell where I need to start and stop down here. Okay. Now I usually turn on my laser light, but when with with binding, um, I can turn that on for you. But with binding, sometimes I don't just because it's so short. I can actually see where I'm going, and I don't know. I think you can be, see it okay on the on the screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn my laser light on. My needle is in the center, and I, my laser light is in the center. And I'm gonna go, I'm just going to run that laser light to the corner. So if you haven't used the laser lights on your machines, it's pretty awesome. So the first two um, pieces are together. I'm going to flip this one over with the right side together, or right side showing, and then I'm going to lay the next piece on here. Do the same thing. I'm, I've got a salvage on this end too, so I'm just going to kind of flip the salvage up over the edge. And then I'm going. there's a salvage on this one too, so I'm just going to go above it so that I have... Um, I don't have any selvage in my seam, and I'm going to run that. You notice I didn't cut anything off. I just, I just keep. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to use my laser light to help me, to help me uh, go from corner to corner. And I'm doing these at a 45 degree angle. And this one has a selvage on it, so we'll do this one up here like this. And then match up my corners and watch my laser light and run it down. So now all my, my fabrics are together. I'm just going to snip with my scissors these little um, strings in between here. Okay, and then I'm going to trim these little dog ears off. So I'm just going to trim up and across and, if it, and make it about a quarter of an inch seam. If it's not exactly a quarter of an inch seam, it's fine. I usually just use my scissors to do this. If you want to, you can go to your uh, mat and do a quarter inch with your rotary cutter. I'm kind of um, lazy and don't want to have to get up from the machine. So, so I'm just going to snip these off at about a quarter of an inch. Like this. Now I did, there is a PDF file on the Dropbox on Sew so Along with Jan, and I put a video up yesterday about how to find that. There's a there's a, um, a PDF file called Bind Aid, and this is how I learned how to do binding, and it's very very cool. Except that they do do it the traditional way that you turn you put the binding on the front and and sew it down by hand on the back. I prefer to do the machine uh, version so that I sew I actually sew my binding on the back of the item and then flip it to the front and sew it down with the sewing machine. Okay, so now I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to open up these seams like this, nice and flat, and then I'm going to fold my binding in half and iron it like this with the with the wrong sides together, okay? So I think you, everybody can do that. So I'm going to go um, stop the video for a second and I'm going to go uh, do the pressing on my binding. Okay, so I've got my binding ironed over and it's all in one piece. Now this is going to be the binding for the bag this evening so I'm going to be using a different binding on this little bag that I've got in front of me that I'm going to put on the binding for you. So I'm just going to roll this up around my fingers and just set this aside. So this is going to be my binding for my bag tonight. Um, so I had some different binding but I wanted to show you how to put it together 
because I know some people are confused about that. All right. So this bag is um, our little project bag, and I've got the whole thing assembled, but now I'm ready to put the binding on. So the first thing I did is I did put this little, I put the little strap on. I just got it um, clipped because I like these little binder clips. They work really well for the, or the little clover clips. They work really well for the, um, for these because there's some plastics and some vinyl on this. So, um, and then this is my binding for this one. Okay, these little polka dots. Now, the one thing with this, with this, I am going to be putting this on the back, and this project bag has vinyl on it. So I was struggling with this vinyl, not wanting to move around along my feed dogs very well. So what I found that worked well is I put some, um, some of this um, Kimberbell paper tape along the edge of like where the seam allowance is going to be. I'm going to try to move it in so that it's not going to get into the seam, but it needs to be like where the feed dogs are because um, I was really struggling with my with my uh, bag moving over those feed dogs. And this this is like paper, so I thought I'd just stick some paper tape over this so that the feed dogs would smooth go more smoothly over that vinyl. Because normally when I when I work with vinyl, I, I sew from the top, but you know, I want to put my binding on the back. So let's just go ahead and we'll put some, pa some paper tape over this just to let it glide over those feed dogs a little bit. I found that this worked fairly well um, so that it would, it was trying to stop on me um, all the time and, and get stuck. And it was just because it was because of this vinyl. And this stuff comes off really well, so it doesn't like, you know, leave a residue and all that. Um, I may have to go get another roll here though. Looks like I'm out. A second here, I may have to go get another roll. Pause the video a second and get another roll. I am, I'm out. Let me pause the video a second here. Okay, so I got, I got the paper tape reloaded in my dispenser, and I've got some paper tape up along here. So that should help me um, glide this over those feed dogs a little bit, because that, that vinyl just really catches on everything. So, um, But I wanted to be able to sew this um, from the back so that I could flip it over to the front. Okay, so we've got our binding here. I'm going to start here at the bottom. Let me turn off my laser light. I don't need that turned on anymore. And turn it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my piecing stitch on my machine. So it's Q on the Q tab. Most of you have those tabs on your machines. And then I'm going to do Q02, which moves the needle to the right. And then I can run my fabric right along the edge of my J foot. So I just have my standard J foot on my machine right now. Okay, just my standard zigzag foot. And I want to be able to run this along the edge of my bag. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of down here towards the, the corner here, and I'm going to leave an, oh, maybe a tail of six, six, eight inches long, okay? And we're going to go down here towards the bottom. There we go. And I want to leave, I want to be able to sew a few inches before I have to turn the corner. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, drop my needle, and I do have, um, I'm using polyester thread for this project bag because I wanted it to be stronger. So there is polyester thread in here, and which is fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. Let's see if I get the camera a little closer here. And then I'm going to, I'm using a quarter inch seam, and I still have my inverter unit on. So if I'm if my bag catches, that's why my bag is catching on my machine. So I'm going to go down here to the corner and I'm going to stop about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Okay, and I'm going to tie a knot. So I like to start kind of in the center of the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to cut that off now and I'm going to flip this around. And this is how you turn these corners. So you're going to flip the binding up. Oops, it's got stuck down here. I'm going to flip it up at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to make sure that, that the corners match up right here. Okay, and then I'm going to get a nice corner there, and then I'm going to flip it down straight along the bottom edge. 
like that. And then the other, the raw edges will be together on the side. And then I'm going to do my quarter inch seam. So I'm going to start, I want to start just on the fabric. And I'm going to tie a knot here. And I'm going to get everything lined up. And you notice I'm not using pins. I don't normally pin binding. I just hold it. I find that I do better with that. And I'm doing a quarter inch seam. Running the edge of my foot right along the edge of the binding in the bag there. Now I'm, I'm, I'm noticing, see I'm on that vinyl right now and that paper tape is really helping because it's not, um, it's not sticking on me. It was really sticking really badly the first time I did this. And I figured out that if I put a little of that tape on there, just, it just lets it glide over and then the tape comes right off. And if you sew through the tape, you can get it off real easy. So, okay. So we're going to get this up and then I'm going to stop a quarter of an inch from the edge of the bag right here. And you can mark it if you want to, if you're not sure where that is. I kind of, I have a good guess now, so I just kind of stop at about a quarter of an inch. Okay, and we're going to cut off again, and I'm going to turn the bag again. And again, we're going to do the 45 degree flip. And I'm going to flip it back down making the edges even and then I'm going to straighten this out and then we're going to start on this corner. It does help if you have your embroidery unit off. I just, I haven't, I'm lazy and don't like to take mine off. So my embroidery unit's kind of in the way, but this machine's pretty big, so it's okay. All right, so we're going to go up this side. Now I'm going to get to these straps here. Now I want to make sure my straps are straight and I just pin them with one of those clover clips. And I'm just going to hold it until I get right up to the point of the handle. And then I'm going to take the clip out. And you want to make sure you hold them so that they don't move on you and they don't get crooked. Okay. I'm just going to sew over that. And that's why I wanted to use polyester thread because it's a little stronger than cotton thread. And then when I'm doing those handles, then they'll be nice and firm. Okay. And we're going to be just about down here to the other one here. leave the clip in until I get as close to it as I can and then I'm going to take it out and just make sure you hold it so that it doesn't get crooked. Okay, go over that. You notice that I'm just going all around the whole bag because there's no, there's not going to be like a, the, the top, the, the, the handle is going to be sewn into the binding. So, right now I'm going to, I notice that my zipper is a little close to the edge here so I'm going to pull it down a little bit, just get it out of my way, my zipper pull. All right, so I'm going to go here, and then I, again, I'm just about to the corner. So I'm going to go ahead and stop about a quarter of an inch from the corner and tie it off. Okay, and now we're going to be down on that, you know, that side that has the vinyl again. So this this paper tape um, really helps to smooth it over. So just put some of that paper, that Kimber Bell paper tape over there. That works just really well. Okay, so I'm going to flip this back at the 45 degree angle. And if you if you go download Bind Aid from the Dropbox on Sew Along with Jan, um, there's good pictures on there too. And, and what I'm going to do next and show you how to do the top stitching, um, that's not on Bind Aid, but this part is. So you would do this e the same way if you were sewing it on and then stitching it down by hand. But that, that's how I learned to do binding. It was wonderful, and it was just a, not one piece of paper. I think I just have it up there under Bind Aid, and um, it really helps. So I've got my quarter inch seam. I'm going across the zipper there, too. Get everything kind of lined up. Yeah, that paper tape really helps. I was really struggling with the first the bag I made the last time, and the bag turned out fine, but boy, I was like, I've got to figure out a way to make those speed dogs move over that vinyl better, and that tape just takes care of it. Okay, now we're getting down here towards the other corner, so remember I'm going to stop about a quarter of an inch away. Just a second here, I'm stuck on my cabinet back here. All right, we're going to get go down here to about a quarter of an inch from the edge. 
I'm going to tie a knot, and then we're going to turn the last corner. Now we don't want to sew too far because we need a little bit of space over here to do the flipping to show you how to do the um, binding um, so it's continuous. So when we go around, we're just going to just turn around the corner maybe a couple of inches, okay? So we have a little room down here to work. All right, so I'm going to flip the last corner. I'm going to go up a quart, go up and fold it up at a 45 degree angle, make it nice and straight, and then bring it straight down. We're going to start on the edge and get our quarter inch seams to set up, and I'm going to tie it off. And then this sew, we'll sew up about maybe two or three inches here. That should be that should be enough, and then I'm going to tie it off. You just want to get around the corner, basically. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to do this little flip at the end. So this this is also on bind aid, and this is how I learned to do this because I I actually feel pretty comfortable doing this now. Now my binding, of course, you know, ended up with a with a seam right here. So we're going to have two seams really close together, but it's just a bag, so it'll be fine. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to, yeah, leave that in. So it'll be all right. Okay, so what we're going to do is I take, this is the side that we just turned the corner, and I'm going to take this down, and I'm going to kind of fold it down a little bit, and I'm going to flip this one over. This is, the t this is the one we started with here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my little ruler or my hem gauge, usually is what I grab if I can find it. It's always in the bottom of my little drawer here. And... Um, I'm going to measure, I'm going to set the little measuring thing on two and a quarter inches because that's how wide our binding was. And I'm going to measure from the end here two and a quarter inches. And I'm going to put a pin there so that I know where that is. So I'm going to put a pin, and I'm not, I'm not putting the pin in the top piece of fabric, I'm putting it in the bottom one because that's the one I'm going to cut off. So I'm going to get my two and a quarter inches. I'm just going to put my pin right there like that. And there's, oh good, it's going to cut off that little seam. So here's my, oh, I think I'm going to measure it one more time. I think it's just going to cut my seam off so it should be fine. And I always try to make the seams end up right, but you know they never do. So, And I usually get a seam in the corner it seems like too. All right, so here's a two and a quarter inches on my little hem gauge. Let's put the pin in there again. Oops, got to get in between the layers there and put the pin in. There we go. There's my two and a quarter inches. Okay, and then I'm going to, because I need to overlap these, that's what I'm, I'm measuring here is the overlap of these two, because remember that was two and a quarter inches was the um, measurement, the width of our binding. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back and make sure it's good and straight where that pin was, and I'm just going to take my little scissors and I'm going to snip this off. So it's nice and flat. Now this is a little short right here, so I might have to pull some stitches back a little bit, but we'll see how we do here. All right. So I'm going to lay this. This is how we do this flip. I think I'm going to have to pull some stitches back a little bit so I can just resale sew that. It's okay. I, I just need a little bit more play on this side, so I, I sometimes have to do that. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to lay this flat, this side, this is the side we ended with. I'm going to lay it flat like that. And I'm going to take this side right here. And this is where everybody gets confused. So I'm going to take this side. This is where we started. I'm going to turn it at that 45 degree angle like we did the corners. Okay. And then I'm going to open this up down here. Let me push this up so you can see. I'm going to open this up like this. And I'm going to continue on. I've got the right side right here. I'm going to continue on and put the right sides together, okay? And then I'm going to pin this at the corner. And this is kind of stiff, so you have to kind of, it makes it a little harder to pin because this bag is a little stiff. It's easier with a quilt. Okay, so we're going to put the pin in the corner, and I'm going to put a pin down. Oops, got a little piece of extra piece down there. I'm going to put a pin down at the end down here. And a pin on this end. Like this. Okay. 
Now if it helps you, and we can do that, it makes it easier, a little bit more visual. I take, I have a little short ruler in here, and at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from corner to corner, or what I often do is just mark my corners with a water-soluble pen so I can really see there's the corner on that side, and then this one, you know, is underneath. So I want, I want to mark, where, oops, I could just mark my, my machine too. I want to mark where that corner is. And this is usually how I do it. I just mark my two corners so I can really see them, make it very visual. You can draw a line all the way across if you want. I just normally don't. Okay, then I'm going to, to switch my needle from the quarter inch piecing stitch to Q01, which then places my needle in the center of the machine. And I need to sew from that those two marks I made, I need to sew from corner to corner. So I am going to fold the bag kind of in half because you need to get this to lay flat. And this is always a little tricky with the stiff stuff to get this to lay really flat because you want your binding to be flat. Okay, and then I'm going to put that under my foot where that mark was on the first corner. Tie a little knot. Okay, and then I'm going to get this laid flat. It's not quite flat yet. I'm going to make sure these are all flattened out. And then I'm going to sew. Let's turn the laser light back on because that helps a little bit. There we go. And we can see where lines are. And I can, I can aim that laser light over there to the other mark that I made with my water-soluble marker. Okay, and I'm going to cut it off. And so again, I have sewn from corner to corner because we need that we need that um, 45 degree angle there. I'm going to take these pins out and flip this back over. And look, it's all in one piece now. So I'm going to cut out all that bulk in there. We don't need all that. And I always, before I cut anything, I always test it to make sure that I've done it correctly. Okay. So, and then I'm going to cut this out with my scissors and then we'll just turn we'll just um, open that little seam we can just finger press this seam open like that and then I'm going to I like to pin this or in this case we could just use the binder the little um, you know the little clover clips those are work too so I like to clip this down because I have a tendency to things have a tendency to like wiggle on me when I'm doing the last little bit of binding here so we'll just put a little couple little clips I'm gonna I'm gonna start back a little further because remember I had to rip a little bit on this corner so get it started back a little bit back a little bit further so that it is all caught we'll clip these down just to hold it in place And if you did your measurements right, everything should be exactly the same size. So with any luck at all, that's the way it works out. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to Q02 again so that I have my quarter inch seam. I'm going to turn the laser light off because I need my quarter inch seam again. Take that first binder clip out. And I am going to back up a little bit so that I can, you know, tie off that little area where I ripped a little bit. Should be fine. Okay. And then we're going to sew that little section down that we hadn't sewn yet. So I'll take the binder clips out as we're going. And sometimes I have to ease that in a little bit. You know, like I might be just a teeny tiny little bit off, so my binding is just a teeny tiny bit long, but it's not bad. There we go. It's a little harder with this. The, the bag is a little poofy, so I, I find it harder to put binding on, you know, poofy, really poofy things. Um, this one's a lot poofier than a quilt would be. So I do a lot of binding on quilts. So, Alright, so we're just about there. And we're at the end. We're just going to go ahead and tie off. And cut. And now the binding is all the way around the little bag. So um, I'm going to pause the video for a second. So I have to go iron. So the, the next step when you're doing um, binding my machine is I'm going to go take my iron and I'm going to very strongly crease this binding out so that it is very sharply creased on the back here and all the way to the corners. You know, you got these beautiful corners. 
and we're going to make sure that it's very well creased and steamed down with the steam iron. You do want to be a little careful. You're going to get a little bit of fogging on your vinyl, which is fine, but you're working from the back, so it's fine. But just make sure that this is all nicely creased and steamed out with the iron, okay, before we start the next step. All right, so I'm going to pause the video, and I'll go do the ironing. Okay, so I've got my ironing done on the back of the, of the bag. So as you can see, I've got these pressed out, so they're nice and flat. Got the corners ready. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it to the front. So you want it nice and pressed, so there's a nice, nice um, seam here. I'm going to turn this to the front. And I have removed the tape. I did notice that I had just a little bit of residue on my plastic, so I, I got a little glue, uh, I, that goo gone, and just, just rubbed it off. I've still got a little bit right here, so I may have to finish that afterwards. Um, but that tape, will take that off that plastic. But that um, paper tape sure helped a lot. Um, the Kimberbell paper tape does not leave a residue. I have a couple of different kinds, and I think I had that, that kind that I just put in my little dispenser was a little bit more residuey. So it I'd had to do a little bit of um, I had to do a little bit with the goo gone, but it doesn't it takes it right off, so it's no big deal. Um, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on the front now. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get my my corners all set. And I do this on a on a quilt too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll show you how I do the corners. Look the first thing I like to do is I like to turn down the binding. I'm turning it to the front, and I like to clip it, you know, a little ways from each corner with the clips, like this. And so I have this this here, and I don't clip the whole thing. I just kind of do this part. But then what i got to do is i got to get this corner so that it's beautiful like the back corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my thumb up the right-hand side, because remember, we're going to be sewing this direction and sewing around this way. So I'm going to... Take my thumb and push it up towards the corner on the right-hand side, and I'm going to make that corner, and I'm going to bring, push it up and make that 45-degree corner. And you can see the, the little line where the sewing is. That's the sewing line that I sewed on. i got a little thread stick in here. We'll clip that out of there, get it out of our way. But I'm using my seam line that I sewed on right here, to help me and I'm pushing that binding up with my thumb on the right and making the corner and making this beautiful 45 degree corner and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to stick it in that inside corner and stick it out to the corner so that I can hold that in place so it doesn't move so I didn't quite catch both layers of fabric so I'm going to try that again I like to keep this I want to make sure these 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 corners don't move on me, so I like to pin those, and I just leave the pin in until I'm while I'm sewing it. Okay, so there's my corner. All right, so then I'm going to go down and do another corner. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to pull the binding over to the seam to the seam line, and you, and I made these red so you could see them. Um, and you want to use when you're doing this last binding bit with the with the uh, Zigzag. We're going to use a zigzag stitch on this. You do want your binding to be your your thread to be very matchy matchy, or use monofilament because monofilament is clear and that works really well. I think the red that I have should be match matching enough that it shouldn't show so too much. So, oops, I'm going to put another clip over here. Now these place mats are a little bit on the fuzzy side, so they like to shed a little bit on me here. All right, so then I'm going to take my thumb again up the right hand side, put it. Put the binding edge of the binding right along that line. I'm going to push my thumb up in there, and I'm going to make that nice quarter inch or that 45 degree angle into the corner, and I'm going to pin that in place. Make sure that it stays put while we're trying to sew this. Okay, so there's that corner. All right, then I'm going to go over here to this other one, and I'm going to put a couple of binder clips or the little clover clips in. I don't know why I call them binder clips. I've always just called them binder clips, I guess. But they're clover clips. Those little plastic clover clips. Love the things. They work really great, especially if you're using stuff like with the plastic. You know, this vinyl, we can't really pin into it because it'll show all the pin marks. So I use these little clips a lot when I do pin. Okay. 
So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my right hand, my right hand, and I'm going to push my thumb up into the corner, and I'm going to fold this down like that, and make that nice 45 degree angle. And I'm going to put a pin in there. I'm matching my seam lines and matching those corners up because you want the front and the back to both be beautiful. Okay, so there's the back. Alright, so then we're going to go ahead and do the last corner here. And you got to be a little careful because then you know you can stick yourself with the pins. But I found that it works better for me to pin from the inside to the outside and just careful not to st stab yourself with the pins. Alright, so let's put the clips on here. And whoops. I have my scissors on the floor now. I spend most of my life picking up my scissors. Right, so put that in there and then oh, it looks like I, I'm going to need my scissors because I need to clip that little clip that little thread off of there. There's little threads you know in the corners because we started and stopped there so kind of get them out of the way because otherwise they don't always work real well. All right. And I'm going to push my right thumb up into that corner, pull it down, and make that beautiful 45 degree angle there. I'm going to put my pin in there. So it lays all nice. Now that one's a little crooked, so I'm going to have to rearrange it just a little bit. There we go. Get the pin in there. I like that. All right, and then the rest of the the um, the rest of the binding, I'm just going to hold it. I find that it just works better for me just to hold it up to the um, seam line, and um, I'm going to try to use my J foot. I think I'm going to be on the fabric enough with the foot that I should be okay with just my regular foot instead of the the Teflon foot. Even though we're going to be around this plastic, I have a hard time seeing through the Teflon foot because you know it's kind of it's kind of um, it's not clear, so it's a little hard for me to see through it. So I'm going to try it with my regular foot. I think I got the other binding on with the regular foot. So, all right. So let's start over here on the side. And what I'll do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my binding up to the stitching line that I made, you know, to stitch the binding on. And I'm going to be bringing it up to that. And I'm actually going to be sewing one stitch off the binding and one, so we're going to use a zigzag and one stitch on the binding. And we want to, we want to line that line up as perfectly as we can, because then when we turn it over, the zigzags are going to be on the binding on the back as well. So that's the goal, is that the, the, the stitches are all on the back too, so you don't really see um, you don't really see the stitching on the back either. It'll be on the binding, okay? And you do, like I said, you do want this to be pretty matchy uh, thread so that it doesn't show very much. For a bag, it doesn't matter as much. For a quilt, I'm pretty careful about what I choose. I like it to be very matchy or I use monofilament. And I know um, my other bag that I made, I think I used monofilament on this. I just didn't have a, a red that matched well enough, so I don't know if you can see it. But I did this one with monofilament, and you can you can just you can see the stitch you know the indention of the stitches, but you really can't see the stitches on this. So this is the other bag I made, but I did do this with monofilament. Okay, so this one I think the red the this red was a little bit more orangey, so this one should work okay. All right, so we're going to start over here on the side. So hopefully my foot will work okay. If it doesn't, we'll go to the Teflon foot. But you're, you are going to be basically sewing on the binding. So um, the vinyl shouldn't be too much of a problem now. So it, it is when you're sewing sewing the seams. But okay. And then I'm going to go over here. Well, let's, let's do this first. Let's go over here to the screen. And I'm going to go back to my main um, screen for the zigzag. I like number 1-10. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you can set settings for, like if you have certain settings that you like for certain stitches, I like to set my zigzag that I'm going to use for my binding at 2 for the width 
and 1.4 for the length. And I set that up and then I saved it in my machine by hitting memory. So you can save up to five, a lot of the machines, not all, like most of the bigger machines, you can save five different settings. So if I hit retrieve, see I have a couple of other settings here also. So like this 5.5 and 2, that's the one I use for my jelly roll rugs. So I just like to keep the, the stitches, I like to keep the um, settings that I use all the time in the machine so I don't have to write them down somewhere and then I lose the note and I can't remember what I use. So this is the, the setting that I use for my Jelly Roll rugs and this is the setting I use for binding. Alright, so we're going to use that one for the binding, the 2 and the length is 1.4. Alright, so let's go back over here again. Now this is where I always have to put my glasses on so that I make sure that I'm hitting this just the way I want to hit it. Okay, let's see if I can get it fairly close for you. And I'm going to put my glasses on and I'm going to pull this binding over to that stitch line. Alright, just to the stitch line. I'm going to put my foot down and I, what I'm going to do, there's a notch in the middle of my foot. That's why I like using the J foot. There's a notch right in the middle of that foot. And I'm going to put that notch right on the very edge of my binding. And I'm going to drop my needle, tie a knot. So hopefully this foot will be okay, because this is the foot that's a lot easier for me to put binding on with. So, yep, looks like i still got just a teeny bit of residue down here, so I'll get the, the goo gone out again and just, just wipe it off a little bit more. All right, so I've got my binding held down, and I'm going to, I am stitching the zigzag. One stitch is going off the edge of the binding, and one stitch is on the binding. Yep, I think the foot's going to be okay. Alright, so I'm holding this, and I'm just holding it right up to that line. And one, one of the zigs, you know, the zig on the left is going off, just off the binding, and the zag on the right is going on the binding. So now we're up on the fabric, so it'll be a little bit, little bit easier. Okay, so now we're, we're approaching the corner, so I'm going to, again, I'm holding my binding right up to that, that seam line. And I'm going to put my thumb, I'm putting my finger kind of in this corner because I want to make sure that my corner stays straight. And I'm going to sew right up to that corner with the pin in there. I'm not taking that pin out. And I want to sew into the corner about a stitch or two. Okay. And I've still got the pin in there. And now I'm going to turn the corner. And I'm going to check this side to make sure we're okay. Now the one thing that I do when I get to the corners, I found that like I'm, I'm a little too far in. I took an extra stitch. So I'm going to raise my needle, that's why I leave the pin in, and I'm going to move my binding, I'm going to move my bag out and put that notch right back on the edge of my fabric again. And then I'm going to take this clip out, make sure everything's tucked in here, right up to the sewing line. And then I'm going to start sewing because now I know, see I'm going to be a little caught here because i got to take this, I'm going to have to take the pin out to get it to go. This is pretty thick. This bag, you know, it's 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 a placemat, so it's a little bit thick. There we go. But that's how I get my my corners really straight because they, if I I often have to lift my foot and just bring my needle down slightly in or out just to get it lined up again. So we're gonna go down this side. I'm doing the same thing. The left hand side of the zigzags going just off the binding and the right side is on the binding. Okay. This is a little bit stiff so you have to kind of hold it in. It's poofy at the bottom here so. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I've done a lot of binding, so I can do this fairly quickly now. It took me a while to learn how to do this. 
and my binding is starting to look better. I do even a lot of my quilts this way now. I didn't for years. I didn't. I always put it on the front and flipped it. And and Judy likes to hand stitch, so she would help me hand stitch it on. I don't like to hand stitch, but after I found this method of putting binding on, I've done pretty well. So yeah, this is looking good. Okay, so let's just keep going here. Get it turned right to the seam line. We're approaching another corner here. So I'm going to take the, oops, I'm going to leave that in just for a second because i got to get this little section. I'm having trouble getting it to lay down for me. There must be a little bit of a thick spot right underneath there. There we go. That's better. Okay. Take this clip out and we're approaching this other corner so I'm going to match up my seam line. And I know some people do this with a narrower zigzag, but I can't hit it if I get any narrower than two. So I've been using a two millimeter zigzag, and that seems to work for me. Okay, so we're approaching this set next corner. I'm just going to kind of pull back so I can make sure that corner is nice and straight. And I'm going to go right up to the corner. I'm leaving that pin in, and I know you just have to be careful with the pins. Okay, so I'm going to stop about right there. And I didn't, I need to take one more stitch. Just, I'm just going to tap my foot controller, take one more stitch. I think it'll be okay there. Yeah, it looks better. All right. And then again, I can look at it. I'm going to look at where my foot is. Now my, my little notch is over to the right a little bit. So I'm just going to raise my needle and I'm going to readjust the foot and drop my needle again. And that seems to work well. It doesn't make, you don't notice it. You know, it doesn't really take a stitch until it goes out of the corner. And then once I get out of the corner, then I can pull that pin out of there. All right, so I'll take this clip off, and we'll go up the other side. Now we're approaching that vinyl again. But this foot is on the fabric for the most part, so it seems to work okay. I just really have a hard time with the Teflon foot. Putting binding on, I can't see well enough where the stitches are going. This has a bigger opening at the top. Alright, so I'm just approaching this vinyl now. Pretty good. Oops, looks like I've got a bunch of little hairs back here, so we'll get some of this trimmed out of here so it doesn't get caught. Okay, whoops. Looks like I actually have a little bit of tape right there. <laughs> Didn't get all the tape off. There we go. Okay, whoops. I got a piece of tape in there too, so we'll get that out of there. Okay. Going up the side here. Like I said, I can feel just a little residue right there from the tape. So, but that sure did make it easier to get that that binding on. So it's worth just doing a little bit of cleanup at the end. So I will go get my bo little bottle of Boo Gone again and just just clean that little edge up right there. Just about up to the zipper again. Get this clip out of the way. Yeah, I know I've done this several times on other classes, but I know I have a bunch of new people, and I thought maybe it'd be helpful if I just did the whole binding, and I thought I could just tape it today while I did my practice bag for today. I hadn't made one of these for a few weeks, so I thought I'd better make one today so that I remembered how I did it. <laughs> and that I could make this video for you for the binding. Because I don't know if you're going to want to sit and watch me make binding tonight, so 
we can if, if, if I won't put this up if, if uh, we do it in class. So, all right, so then I've got, I've got to the corner, I've got the, and I also moved this zipper pull out of the way. So now the one thing I want to do is this, we're, we've got the handle up here. You want to leave the handle back so that this, that this binding will lay flat here because you're going to sew through that. But you want to make sure that, that those handles are flat back there and not, you know, don't get uh, curved under or something. All right, so let's see how I am on the corner. See, I'm a little over shot the corner again, so I'm just going to take my foot and I'm going to move it back out and drop my needle again. Take this clip off and then match my seams up here. Okay, so that where that handle is here, I'm getting close to that handle. I want to make sure it's good and flat. There we go. Pull this over. And you can start and stop your, your binding wherever you want. I just happen to start kind of on the side, but you can start it on the bottom. You can start it on the top. Just wherever it works for you. Okay, so I'm going over that handle now. I just went over that handle. And again, that left side of the zigzag is off the binding, and the right one is on the binding. There we go. Getting ready for this other handle here, so I'll have to be careful. It's good and flat. Pull the binding up to the seam line. Once you do binding this way a few times, it 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 took me some sh some tries. You know, I had to I had to try several times to do it this way. And I'm and I started doing this like on my settee pillows and stuff. So some, of course now I'm going to wind up run out of bobbin threads. So I'm just going to tie a knot here. And then I will stop the video for a second and wind a bobbin. I didn't realize I was going to run a bobbin thread, but, you know, I always do. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop the video for a second. I'll wind my bobbin, and then we'll do the last corner and finish the edge over here. Okay, so I got the bobbin wound. So now I'm going to start right where I left off. I, I went ahead and dropped my needle and tied the, tied the thread off there where I stopped. And then we're going to continue on to this corner. Make sure you get your seam, the binding right up to that seam line. Okay, now I'm going to have to pull back on this corner a little bit and where that pin is. So I'm lining it up here. And I'm going to just sew right up to the corner and leave the pin in. And stop about, yeah, about right here, I think. Take one more stitch, then we'll go around the corner. And then I'm going to adjust my foot if I need to. Actually, this one I did pretty well. I got the, the little, that little notch in the center is right, right on the edge of my binding in the corner. And I'm just going to continue around the corner here. Take this clip off. It's like we've got a couple little strings we need to get out of here. Oops, I keep hitting the camera. Sorry, guys. All right, get this one out of the way, too. And we're getting just about done. So I'm going to go over the zipper now. That's one thing about, you know, doing the binding like this, then the zippers are well, you know, that are secure in the bag and everything, too. All right, so now we're approaching that vinyl again, so just kind of watch yourself with the vinyl. It seems to be working pretty well, though. And, oops, got some more little strings. Let's get that little, these uh, placemats were a little ravelly on the edges, so. Got these little strings sticking out all over the place. All right, just about done here. 
getting around to the end. I'm going to put a pin where I ended, <laughs> just because my thread's so matchy, I can barely see it. Okay. Get that over that seam line there. Looking down, we're just we've got a couple inches left to go. And get that pulled over. I'm just having a little trouble getting this pulled over right now, so it's just being contrary. There we go. Okay, so we're just about down to the end where the pin is. I'm going to try to stop about where I started so that it doesn't really show. And we're going to tie it off and cut. And we're going to be done with the binding. And the binding always looks so nice when it's all sewn down and everything. It, make, it really makes the bag. So take these two pins out. Trim a couple of these little threads off where I had to start and stop a couple times. Whoops, just stabbed myself with the pin. All right, so there's our binding, and that is machine binding. You do the same thing with the quilt. It is a little easier to, to bind the quilts because it's softer than the bag is, but um, and there's the handle. So it makes a really nice bag for your pop rulers. So the one thing that I like to do is I always like to put a little, like a little zipper pull on here. And I've got a little zipper pull. So we'll do this too. Put this little zipper pull here. Make a little tassel. And we'll put this through the zipper here, hopefully. See if I can get it through there. And we'll just tie it up, put it on there. Oops, I almost made it. Let's try it again. Thought I just added a little bit. If I can get it in there. These zippers are pretty small. I think I might have had to use a needle one time when I did it. Oh, there we got it. Okay, so put it through there. Do a little half hitch on there. And then we have a little tassel on our bag. So there's the little finished zipper bag with the binding. And there's the back of it. So I use the other side of the placemat so it looks different on either side. So there's the project bag. So if you have any questions about binding, um, go get that bind aid. It's up on the up on, in, on the Dropbox on Sew Along with Jan and get bind aid and it will really help you. Um, the only difference is that they do do it, they tell you to put it on the front of the quilt and flip it to the back. So if you want to do the machine binding, you put it on the back and flip it to the front so you can be working on the front instead. So, Okay, so if you have any questions, message me through Facebook, call me at the store, and we just got our binding on our bag. Thanks, everybody.